This is our 63 Chrysler 300 behind me. And my dad and I were looking at it the other day. It seems like it's got a little bit of rust peeking out. So I took the rocker molding off and it's got quite a big spot we got to patch. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna set up the new Summit 200 MIG welder. And I'm going to show you how to actually set it up and how to make a patch panel and how to actually install it the correct way and try and get it as nice as you can. All right, so first what we're gonna do is when you're working with a MIG and gas wire, what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to your local gas store, uh, like we have air gas or Prax Air or something like that, and get some MIG gas. It's actually like an argon mix, so it's the best one to use when you're using a MIG. When you're using a TIG, you use straight argon to keep it cool and help it flow and everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by hooking up our canister with the supplied gas regulator. All right, so one other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you chain this thing up or have some sort of way to secure it to your cart or whatever you're using. Because in case you didn't know this, these things, if you blow the lid off of one, like if you blow this knob off, it turns into a torpedo and can go through a few cars. So definitely make sure you secure this bad boy. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this red thing off and then you're gonna screw in the regulator. Then you wanna make sure it's tight. I'm just using a pipe wrench for it. All right, that should be tight. All right, so the other thing is too, you wanna to double check and make sure these are all tight. There we go, that's tight. That one's tight. Now we can test it. There we go. All right. So we want it right at about 20. So that should be about perfect where we want that at. So this one shows the pressure coming out of the gun and this one shows how much is in your tank still. So now what you want to do is hit the power button on you can hear the gas kind of surge through it a little bit check for leaks i don't feel anything i feel the fan coming out that's about it we actually have this really nice cart from summit too it's a awesome cart it's actually got drawers and stuff so you can put all your tips and everything in it um it's really nice to hold all your stuff all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to get the wire set up so as you can see it's got a big roll in here already and this is actually the MIG wire. It comes with a smaller roll of flux core wire, but for what we're doing with gas, you wanna use regular MIG wire. Flux core is gasless and you don't have to use it with that. So, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna open this up. So this is 0.023 wire. This is what we usually like to use. As you can see, it's nice and coppery. So you want where it feeds from to be down low. So it's a straight, it's more of a straight pull into here so you can actually do it. It'll actually go into the feeder better. Let me grab some angle cuts and I'll be right back. So you want to go to where it's angled in, use your angle or where it's bent over the roll. Use your angle cutters, cut that loose and pull it out. What you want to do, you want to make sure you hold it though, because if not, it'll unspool and that's just a pain in the derriere. So then if you come down here, you can see there's a little nib on that. What I'm going to do, cut it straight so it's nice and works a little better. Then you're going to feed it through this silver piece while kind of rolling the hose or rolling the roll. And then there's a little hole right here that feeds up through the cable in the gun. You want to feed this through that next. I usually feed it a pretty decent way so it doesn't pop back out because it's just a pain in the butt. 
Then put that down, clamp that up. And then this is the first time we've run it, so I'll turn it on, run it, and see how it's feeding. If it's feeding too loose or too tight, we can adjust it with this. So the other thing I do too, before I do that, I like to take the tip off so it doesn't have to work so hard to go through the tip. So here's what your welding tip looks like. Your wire goes through there and comes out here. All right, now we're gonna flip it on. So then what you do, you just hold the trigger on this until you see the wire come out. Like so. So then what we do is we take our tip, slide it on, screw it on, and that sleeve that's inside kind of comes out a little bit, but this is better so it doesn't bind up inside. Make sure everything is tight. Put your tip back on. And now, boys and girls, we're ready to weld. All right, so as you can see, I got our patch panel cut out. The piece that was all bad. As you can see, a lot of things came out of it. I sprayed our new panel on the inside and the actual quarter and rocker on the inside. So that way it won't rust out and we won't have to do it again. But I sprayed it with our Summit Racing rust converter. This stuff's great. If I'm not welding new metal to new metal, or it's really difficult to get in the back of something to clean it, I will try and spray it with this and it kind of encapsulates the rust. It stops it from rusting more. So it kind of stops it dead in its tracks. Now that we got that done, give it a couple minutes to dry and then we will start tacking our piece in place and trimming where we need to trim. So now that we're ready to do our welding, we have to make sure we have our proper safety gear on. Right now I'm wearing a Dixon flame resistant shirt, some jeans, boots, socks. Make sure you have gloves and your welding helmet. Those are two of the most important things as well. And one thing I've learned from over the years is wear a stocking cap or wear something to plug your ears because getting a weld spark down your ear canal is not a fun time. And laying down while welding, it's bound to happen. So first things first, we're gonna get our patch panel we made, hold it up, put a little tack in it so we can wiggle it around and make, it, make sure it fits and then get some more tacks in it to hold it tight so we can align everything. The coolest thing too, everything but the jeans you can get from Summit. So another thing you wanna to do too is take your ground clamp and put it on a nice, clean piece of sheet metal. So you don't obviously have to grind off above your wheel well if you don't have to, but there's a rust spot there, so. So there we go, kind of wiggle it on, make sure it gets a good ground. So what we're gonna do is we gotta set up our machine. Right now we have it set up how I like it and set up for sheet, like thin-ish sheet metal, so it's at 14 volts. This controls the, the output volts. So this controls how hot it burns. Uh, the amps for when you're MIG welding is 171. So that means that that's how fast my wire is coming out. Because I like to weld faster. I can actually turn it down a smidge. So I'm going to go to about 140. So now it's, it's going to be a little bit slower. This way it'll go out slow enough to where it will get a nice zzz when you're welding. You'll be able to hear the difference between a good weld and like a slow start than a good weld. All right, so if you guys happen to see when I cut out my piece of metal, if you saw the old piece laying on the ground, I cut out pretty high to where there was actually still good metal. You do that to make sure that all of your rust is gone pretty much. Uh, with this piece, it's a nice, easy setup. This is cut long, but I'll fix that. Uh, the trick is, is to get this body line right here lined up. And it looks like we have that pretty well li lined up in the back. Oof. This is the difference between having the right speed and not the right speed. The bottom one was the right speed, so you get that nice little mushroom uh, weld. The top was not. That's where it was that sputter that's like a sputter spark, I guess. 
with that, I actually went up from 14 volts to 15 volts, and that actually helped it out quite a bit. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to spot right there. So that feels pretty good. All right, so now that I got it kind of tacked in place and I know that it's all pretty well set, what I can do now is I'll go through and trim all the spots where it's overlapping so I can get that nice flush butt weld finish. So what I'm doing now, I got it all pretty much pretty well tacked in. I fit it all up and there's some spots where it's not completely flush. So I'm gonna go back through with my hammer and just lightly tap them to get them to fit a little bit better. We got it all fitting pretty well flush. And now it's just a matter of really taking our time and going pretty much stitch welding it in. Stitch welding is when you go like here, 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 here. The reason you do that is so you don't heat the panel up. If you heat the panel up, it's gonna suck this whole panel in. And you know, this is thick metal, it's old metal, but it still can get very hot and the hotter it gets, the more it's gonna suck in. It's better to take your time now when you're actually welding it in than to waste your time by having to fix what you could have prevented. I guess now it's time for me to continue stitch welding. So, all right, stay tuned. We'll, we'll let you see some of the stitch welding and then because it's gonna be really boring, I'll finish welding it and then we'll show you the finished product. All right, so here, as you can see, we finished up the quarter, kind of. It's, it's finished and ground down. I still need to go through and check for pinholes in it, and make sure that we have all the pinholes covered. After that, though, it should be ready for body work and uh, prime and paint, and then we should have a nice rust-free quarter panel. Questions, leave them in the comments, and make sure you like, follow, and subscribe for more videos like this.